Dwelling in one house are strange brothers three, as unlike as any two brothers may be. The first isn't there, but he'll come beyond a doubt. The second's departed, so he's not about. The third and the smallest is right on the dot, and man without him the others cannot. The third is a factor on which to be reckoned, because the first brother turns into the second. He cannot stand back and observe number three, for only one brother is all you will see. So tell me, my friend, are the three of them one, or are there but two, or could there be none? Just say them out loud, and at once you'll realize that each rules a kingdom of infinite size. They rule it together and are it as well, and in that they're right. So where do they dwell? Well, Cassiopeia helped me figure out the first part because she knows the future. Only three minutes. 30 minutes into the future. Oh, I know. Still, from there, I could guess that the second was the past. But the heart of them was the first. It had to be the present. Now, but Professor, what is time? I know it exists, but what is it? Well, of course, so good salt and noodles. Why well, don't you solve this one, too? Well, I know that time exists. And it's always passing, so it must be from somewhere. Perhaps it's like the wind or a perfume, but it's always going on. So maybe it's like music that you just can't hear because it's always there. Though sometimes I think I have heard it very faintly. Well, Didn't you just find that out for yourself? Oh, you mean the really gave me before breakfast? All dwelling in one house are strange brothers' face, as unlike as any other brothers may be. The first isn't there, but the pony on the jowl. The second's departed, so he's not about. The third and the smallest is right on the dot. The man without him, the others cannot. The third is a factor on which to be reckoned because the first brother turns into the second. You cannot stand back and observe number three, for one of the brothers is all you will see. The, the second brother... <laughs> so, Professor, I figured out the first part because Cassiopeia told, helped me figure out the first part that w it was the future because she knows the future. Well, <laughs> well, Professor, I know still. That helped me guess that the second part was the past, and the hardest one was the first. Uh, was the first, and the third, but it had to be the present. Now, but professor, time exists. So what is it really? Momo, 
Oh, you are so good at solving riddles. Why don't you solve this one too? Okay, well, I know time exists and it's always passing by, so it must come from somewhere. Perhaps it's like a perfume or the wind. Oh wait, that just stays there. So, oh, maybe it's like a song that you can't hear because it's always playing. So sometimes I think I have heard it very faintly. <coughs> yes, I know. That's how I was able to summon you here. Oh, well, the song comes from far off, but I feel like I could hear it in the depths of me. And I imagine that's like the wind making waves on the sea. Oh, I don't know. It makes no sense. No, I think you put it very nicely. That's why I'm going to let you in on a little secret. All the time in the world comes from here. Nowhere else. Never land. Oh, so you mean you make it yourself? No, I am merely a custodian. All humans have their allotted span of time. It is my job to see that it reaches them. It is for them and for them only to guard it and <coughs> use it how they wish. Oh, well, in that... Well, in that case, why don't you just arrange things so that the, it doesn't get stolen by the time thieves? Like I said, it is for them to guard it and for them to use it how they wish. I can only deliver it. It is for up to them to guard it. <coughs> oh, Momo, would you like to see where time comes from? Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, but you must, you must promise to not talk or ask questions. Understood?
is the way to express our horror. We would like to make his acquaintance, but we don't know where he lives. That's right, Momo. Listen carefully, so you'll know we are being completely honest with you. In return, we will give you back your friends, and you can all lead the carefree, happy life you used to enjoy so much. What, what do you want with Professor Aura? We told you. We just want to make his acquaintance. That's all you need to know. Well, even if I could, I wouldn't. What do you mean, if? How did you get there the first time? Oh, Cassiopeia took me. Who is Cassiopeia? Oh, the professor's tortoise. She came back with me, but I lost her. Man, conduct a thorough search for that tortoise. Agent 1234, you take your group to the south. Agent 5678, you take your group to the north. And Agent 007, you take your group to the east. Okay, man, move out.
for no power on earth shall budge them. I'm going now. Don't follow me. Okay. <laughs> Turn it off. What will become of us? Everyone to our stores. War is going to destroy us.
this way to you. And these are the colors of our rainbow. Something I didn't announce in the beginning was that the stage crew, the lighting, and the sound were all manned by our students, some of which just learned to be stage hands two or three days ago. So we're, you know, we're all here to learn, and it was um, a great lesson for them to learn how to read stage notes um, that I was told that weren't exactly accurate. So they had to do with that, and I think they did a great job. Um, our lighting was done by Sawyer Raglan. <laughs> Um, which is a fourth grader, and, and our lights were done by Eli Burleson. <laughs> so that, that's the talent of um, the Journey students. They have the ability to be behind the scenes and in, on the scene, uh, all at the same time, and I'm very proud of them all. Thank you for coming. Oh, also, there are refreshments um, still available in the eighth grade room if you would like to get some. Thanks for coming.